But John Henry Falk may have experienced the most profound effect. He was a graduate student when he interviewed the former slaves, including the two women you hear in this broadcast. Himself interviewed just before he died in 1979, Falk was going on about how he believed in giving blacks the right to go to school, giving them the right to vote, giving them the right to go into anything they qualified for. And then he said he experienced an epiphany. And so now a wagon telling with this old black man and was telling him what a different kind of white man I was. I remember him looking at me very sadly and kind of sweetly and condescending and said, you know, you still... I know you think you're cured, but you're not cured. You can't give me the right to be a human being. I'm born with that right. Now, you can keep me from having that. If you've got all the policemen and all the jobs on your side, you can deprive me of it. But you can't give it to me. Because I'm born with it just like if you was. My God, it had a profound effect on me. I was furious with it. But the more I reflected on it, the more profoundly it affected me. And I realized this was where it really was. Tell you the truth. It's real life. Tell you the truth, huh? Tell you the truth. Welcome to another episode of Respect My Journey. Right over left, we the best. X up. So love, baby. Now, this episode right here, man, I had to come through and just think about stuff and calm down because it's crazy how people think like they can give you the right things that you've been born with the pursuit of happiness the right to pursue your happiness to be happy to raise a family to work to earn your living to teach your family and install proper views i see minds being challenged and i see people trying to take away my pursuit of happiness whether it be white black whatever but more so just evil creep some police officers and some ex-teammates and some other people. It's just evil. So I pray to be protected away from all evil, bad, and harm. Every day, every night, before I leave, before I go anywhere or do anything. And I pray that for other people. Because as you grow and you really did stuff and you really got down in your life and you really was good with these, 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 and this right here and this level, you understand what's going on. You understand how to protect yourself. You understand how to protect others, but you understand the value of yourself because you might be deemed or seen as, as a weapon and because you know how to protect yourself and other people don't know that you know how to do this this well. They don't know that you train and do this stuff this well all the time for years. They don't know what you know, how to puncture different stuff. They don't know stuff like that. They don't understand. So they put themselves in situations through ego and bad thoughts and just stupid shit that they let feed into them and other people feel like feed negative bull, bull crap thoughts into their into their mind. You know, and that's what people do. They look at another person, they see him, they see they don't like another person, they feed that negative to them, and then you put the battery in their back, you gassed up the car, you gassed them, you did a bunch of stuff. You gave them that extra negative energy they needed to try to either, you know, pursue towards something negative or that fuel just to go ahead and try something else and it might harm you and your people. Well, I experienced that, and I keep experiencing this all the time. Like, and I'm, the more and more I'm changing and staying positive and growing, and I'm showing myself this growth. And I haven't put my hands on nobody in a little bit. So I'm growing. It's different. But just making the proper decisions, man, just speaking different, you know, just trying to help people, inspire people, give that positive energy like I know how to give. And it's just crazy. I see people trying to block it and stop it. And it's crazy. It's just, it's just wild. Like, never in my life, well, not never in my life, you know, because I had problems with cops since I was a kid. Like, a cop tried to break my arm. Like, when me and my friends were walking to the store, just young kids walking to the store, try to break my arm because of somebody, something somebody else says. Because I had the basketball in my hand. He wants to come mess with my arm and throw me on the car. I'm just saying. So I've just been used to more and more stupid stuff, getting chased by undercover cops all the time when they come into projects just to mess with us. And, man, stupid stuff, mad stuff, and trying to scare us, put guns out and all this stuff, stuff kids shouldn't have to go through at young ages, like 9, 10, and stuff like that, years old. But let's stay on track. Now, 
people testing my pursuit of happiness and people trying to test my faith and people trying to like, you know, stop me from becoming stronger and a better father and a just more of a awake, mindful spirit and person, just period. And it's it's wild. Like I was at the Pitt basketball game just recently, you know, against West Virginia. And now I've spoken out about the cops on my page. I've spoken out to detectives. I called different attorneys. I called different people, you know, just letting them and making them aware of what's going on. I called different groups and people that are supposed to help me out. And I see a lot of cops taking advantage of people that they feel can't pay lawyers to, you know, execute and get things done and get stuff processed and get these guys in trouble, you know, either get them behind bars or get them to pay some type of civil 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 uh debt back because nobody should be harassed by um police nobody wakes up oh man i hope the cops mess with me or nobody wakes up oh, i hope this dude sends another dude at me through a different way and try to trick me out of my pursuit of happiness to get me <laughs> and put me behind bars and this is what a lot of people do you don't think i've been through this stuff haters jealous people and people trying to get me locked up and put behind bars people making up stories Cops being able to do what they want to do. Punk ex-teammates making up lies and saying stuff about me. Knowing I could beat you. Like, just a whole fact, chip. I've always been better than y'all anything. But knowing I'm good with these. It's just comedy. It's comedy. But they tried, and I seen it. It was weird. I'm at the game. I don't like Julius Page. He was on my team. I don't like him. I forgave him before when he said what he said to me in the parking lot. When he told me he apologized when he had that... It was like a blue Buick or something like that with the with the black tinted windows, and he apologized to me in the back of Atwood when I lived on Atwood Street, 305 Atwood Street. It's just a fact in the parking lot, son. Like they used to old, they like, came back, oh, apologized for saying like I did stuff and I messed up his career, like now I was part of his stuff instead of owning it and telling people the truth. You was going around and telling people stuff that I didn't do, I didn't say, ways I never was towards you, son. Uh, I say that to say this because this dude been jealous of me since AAU and my team been kicking his team ass. So we were supposed to have a cool report when I got the pit. But dude stuck with the brand and dude manipulate situation. They became close hating stuff. So I'll talk about that on another on another episode because I had to deal with a lot when I played this game and when I played for pit with people not trying to pass in the ball on purpose, all type of stuff. So let's get back to live action. Stay on track though, match. So, boom. We had the game. Son, like, like, I don't talk to him, so when I walk in, I got a 10-year-old little girl with me, you know what I'm saying? L little midget, little Maya Buckets. I got her with me. She on my other side, you know, when we sit down. She on this side, like on the right side. So he's on, on the left with his wife and her mother. And you can tell they sauce, like, you know, that's he's the sauce master. That's why we call him the sauce master. It's sauce. It's a drink. But you can tell, like, and it's funny, they let, they let this man do the commentating that pit at the games. This is funny. This is funny. It's crazy. Anyway. Don't even give me a shot at all. Don't give me a shot. I've been around longer. I've been coming to the practice. I've been coming to the workouts. And stuff. But you won't do that. It's too much like right. The person that knows more and the person that's better and the person that delivers the message better, you won't give a shot. But I understand. It's cool. It's all love. Positive energy. Bless up. So, like, dude taps me in my back. And, they're like, I'm like, Nah, like, no, like, no, I know who it is, you feel me? Like, I'm like, no, like, nah, you know, don't try to smile and be like, we cool, don't do that. You know how people be, you know, you know stuff that people do to you and you just never gonna forget, man. This is stuff we all know people did to us, we never gonna forget. I got a lot of stuff people did to me, I'm never gonna forget. A lot of people, certain people said, I'm never gonna forget. It's in certain, uh, certain situations, that's, where, that's how it goes. It happened. So he's tapping me in my back, fam, like, I'm like, yo, son, nah, little girl right here now, mind you. There's other kids in the gym. This is a kid-type friendly environment. This is a basketball game. This ain't the place for extra stupid side talk and other stuff, fam. You already could have been, you know what I mean, apologize for trying to set me up the first time when I went and did the radio show, but I'll get back to that on a separate note. It's the reason why I'm not driving right now. Just a fact. Because of the setup and the sneaky stuff. And he... Thinks he's slick. He's a sneaky dude. I know his game. I know him. Like, he's wild sneaky. Why you think he look like the mouse? Anyway, so 
Yo, dude, poke him like, yo, son, chill. Like, you know, you look at them like, yo, chill. Like, what's wrong with you, son? No, son, like, I'm not talking to you. Like, I'm not gonna mess with you. Like, he's like, yo, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. So now I'm like thinking, like, this this dude trying to get tough now. I've been calling this dude hocus pocus and all this shit in practice, violating him since school, since, like, practicing and when we played, all that, son. Like, nothing, son. Like, now you wait till you 30 something, you think you want to do it at a game? You think you want to try to get tough at a game, but you. So now I'm confused on what he's trying to do now. Like, because this ain't him, this ain't true, Johnny. Repeat movie. So, son, like. <laughs> it's comedy. Son, go like this. He, like, you ain't the only one, you ain't the one. So I'm like, oh, who are you talking to, man? I got street. I'm, I'm from New York, from the Bronx, for real. Like, from the real Jackson. I really get down. Like, you bugging. Like, I really get down. Like, you bugging. So, anyway, I, I just don't understand what you people. With this basketball stuff, all basketball players aren't the same, fam. And I need your ignorant idiots to get this. Like, that's for the ignorant idiots. All basketball players aren't that kid that's super sheltered or been coming from somewhere else, man. I had to go through the worst, and I went it. I went through it, and I made it. Like facts, and it wasn't talking that got me through, champ. Come on, son. So anyway, now mind you. Early in this day, er, I mean, earlier before I came to the game, that's why I still had the little shirt on. I probably smelled a little musty, too, because I just came from kickboxing, like, doing them kickboxing workouts in the mixed muscle wall joint. And I'm going to pick up Maya, and then we came and went to the game. That's a fact. So, fam, picture being, like, you still, you still, like, hyped from the workout. You still ready, you know what I'm saying? Like, you still, like, doing stuff like this from the movements and stuff like that. You still, you still on your joint, B. Yo. And I'm sitting there chilling, trying to like calm down and relax because I got the little girl, you know. You're not supposed to act certain ways in public and around kids, man, especially like there's a bunch of kids. There's already a stigma of people trying to say just because you come from New York, you wild, crazy, you don't know how to control yourself. Then there's a stigma of being my brown skin color. They think all brown skin people are wild, they don't know how to control yourself. Then there's another stigma of just me being a person that takes no bullshit, a low tolerant person. Like, when you think you say some wild shit or think you could try to put your hands snuff me or do something else, I'm not going to work you out. You stupid. You super stupid. I'm not letting nobody just do nothing to me. Like, that's just crazy. It doesn't even sound right. How the hell do you watch me play and watch all that physical shit? You see my face. You see all this shit. You think I'll just be... <laughs> no. I'm scared. I can't fight. When I looked at this dude, he reminded me of Mike Epps. I'm all about the Benjamin, son. Baby, you can't fight. Like, this girl should have held me. She, she did grab him, like, some chill after a second after when I got hype. But anyway, I'm like, yo, so anyway, he tapped me. And I'm like, yo, son, chill. So he was like, you're not the only one. I'm like, oh, man, I processed that already, whatever. Yo, son, look. Like, chill, son. Like, he's, he's tapping me. Like, he's tapping me. Like, he's, like, he's smiling. So I'm like, yo, but he's looking over to the bench. I'm peeping, son, like, fuck is he... Oh, who's over at the bench? Brian Regan. And I've been talking about the, the Judge Regan down there that had my son taken away from me due to their mess up, their effed up technicality with their man. I'm right there in front of the office where I'm supposed to be, and twice the man walked me away from where I'm supposed to be. All I had to do was step a foot in. This man walked me in the, I mean, to the um, elevator twice and put me in the wrong spot on purpose. Tell me set up again. All right. You tell me. Set up, set up. I came back up twice, champ, in the right spot. And then they snuck my son and, and his mom out of there before. And then when I come back to court, after you realize and say you messed up, that you was at fault and your people's at fault, the lady, the, her lawyer says, oh, uh, uh, is, the, is the court order still the same? He says, yes. Now I still haven't seen my son or heard from my son in all of this time since he graduated, which was a year and change ago? Come on now. Come on now, you wrong, and you had my son taken away. But back to live action, we got we gonna deal with you differently. But so I'm like, yo son, I turn around, yo son, like I don't fuck with you, son. I don't fuck with you. Pardon my back, and I went and sat back down. Now I told my, you know what I'm saying, my like part of my language. Feel me? Cause like I said, you gotta carry yourself different when you got a kid, especially a little girl, ten years old, like. So son knowing I got this 10-year-old girl with me, he's trying to front and his 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 wife is sitting right here and his and his and his um the wife and mother sitting behind me.